First of all, I would like to thank uh, Professor Abbasi for uh, elegant words, and I would like to thank uh, Professor Sanir for uh, giving me this uh, honor to present in this uh, great conference involving eminent cardiologists, diabetologists, and uh, endocrinologists as well. And for today, allow me to discuss the following case with you. It was about 45-year-old male patient who was presented with an attack of syncope about five months ago. From the, after taking history from the patient, he reported that it occurred early in the morning while going to work without having breakfast. It was not associated with any palpitation or just pain or sweating, and after that, he recovered spontaneously without any hurt. On example, the patient regarded the vital sign. His pulse was 80 beats per minute. It was regular. Blood pressure 115 over 75 on sitting, and it turned to 100 over 70 on standing. Respiratory rate was 16 cycles per minute. And finally, chest and cardiac examination was free. After asking for laboratory investigation to exclude metabolic causes of this condition, the results came back reveal uh, normal levels regarding serum sodium 138, serum potassium 4.8, and lastly calcium 8.8. And his random blood glucose was uh, 89, a little bit to the low side, and the patient was ill thyroid regarding his serum TSH and free T4 levels. Moreover, ECG was done, it was normal, echo was unremarkable, and final liver and kidney function tests were normal. Back to the past history of the patient, he reported that at age of 30, he gained about 50 kilograms over four years, with BMI reaching about 43 due to sedentary lifestyle and stop his regular exercise. At that time, he started to smoke cigarettes. Four years later, the patient developed type 2 diabetes together with hypertension and dyslipidemia. So he was uh, treated with uh, oral antidiabetic in the form of DBB4 inhibitor with formal combination, ARBs, and phenofibrate. However, his metabolic profile was fluctuating with ups and downs. Four, year, uh, four years later, the patient had ischemic chest pain, and then uh, angina was diagnosed, and then he had placed a stent was placed in his corner. So he was advised to lose weight using uh, diet and exercise, and his BMI decreased to 35, with improvement of his metabolic profile. At age of 40, finally the patient developed obstructive sleep apnea, and so he had to use CBAP for that. At that time, the patient suffered from morbid obesity with BMI 41, together with uncontrolled uh, hypertension, blood pressure was 150 over 90, hemoglobin A1C was 8.3, with high uh, triglyceride level and LDL reaching 145, together with the obstructive sleep apnea. So the patient at age of uh, 42 decided to, uh, to go for bariatric surgery, and then gastric bypass was performed in January 2017. After that, he lost 36 kilograms of his body weight within six months with improvement of his metabolic profile regarding the blood pressure, the blood glucose level, and lipid level, all of medications. And lastly, he was presented with this attack of syncope. So dear colleagues and dear doctors, at the end of my presentation, I'm raising these questions for the audience, and I want you please to uh, start voting using the application on your mobile phones. The first one is all the following tests are useful for this patient to accept. Serum cortisol, plasma ECTH level, serum C-peptide, or serum glucagon. Application on mobile, a smartphone. Uh, 
Okay, uh, would you please uh, open your uh, application icon group and this and then open the live poll and you can answer the question. Doctor, I think we will choose the right and we will choose the right after we choose. We will choose the right word to choose the right word. Hand raising or hand down? Okay. Okay. So... Last one. Most of you will have a goal. Okay. Last one. No, they will have a goal last one. اللي هي الاسي اتش اللي هي تاني واحدة مش طالعة مش طالعة اه اوكي يعني زيرو يعني زيرو محدش اختار so most of you will go for glucagon then the answers will be discussed at the end of the session after the lecture by professor محمد صلاح and professor هلا الزاوي so we'll move to the next question what's the most useful task to be performed in this patient polter monitor ECG, echo, or stress? Would you please vote for the next question? The most useful test to be performed, alter monitor, stress, ECG, table tilt test, or echocardiography. Well, between table test and echocardiogram. Okay, well, uh, so I'm going to move the, to the last question. All the following hormones can be involved in the patient's condition except adrenaline, peptide Y, Y, leptin, or ghrelin. Okay, equal result between uh, PYY and Grand. So, at the end of my presentation, uh, the answers will be discussed at, discussed at the end of the session. And thank you.